do whatever the floor plan that she does have. Uh, if you can use this the dimension to draw and start from this or her design, you don't have to commit to the exact dimensions that she has. You can relate and sense of proportion. You know what I mean? So that could be your start point and then the design itself can be based on this one and you can redraw it. We also need to talk about uh, a date to finish the construction. Uh, I heard from the engineer finally about how we have to stabilize our uh, wall. The three by three piece is going to be a little unstable and won't rotate. So we're going to have to get some of those metal fixing posts that are kind of T-shaped to anchor to the ground. Yes. The, the steel green. The steel green yes. and white. Uh -huh. Yeah. So we're going to have to position those and put them close to the building. We need to get to the point where we get the slab in place, we get that slab anchored in, we get the walls assembled and ready to be mounted onto the, onto the slab. Um, so you can either side it, you can put the siding on out there, um, when it's already positioned and clad it traditionally like, like they do, or you can try to, it'll be very heavy to lift it and carry it with the siding already installed on it. But someone can be free cutting the siding. The machine probably will need to have the open framework or sheeting on it so that you get up there and start uh, putting the roofing elements in the way The department chair is just requesting that uh, uh, the, the structural components of putting the, the sill plates into the slab and bolting those down and then putting the wall panels together on those. Uh, on the slab and uh, assembled outside are things that are reviewed by faculty uh, and probably Dr. Stoker. Jesus Hirveto Vargas. I am an architecture major. Uh, I'm a senior and graduate in May. We are building some full-scale uh, mock-ups of traditional framing with researched um, recycled materials and different means of building. So should we incorporate it in our new design or should we just leave it as is? Uh, existing? I mean, yeah, yeah, I mean, I don't know because if, if we're thinking of cost, this is obviously going to cost more than leaving some yeah. of the walls there because that is a double height wall. The goal is to create these um, these corners or these walls that, um, that teach us how to do traditional framing, give us some experience in, on that level, and uh, just so they can also be used as a learning tool for future studios. It's, it's a lot, but I mean, I think that, that she made that yeah. opening or for daylighting. It's, it's, so, yeah, it's good, good north light. It's a good north light. Maybe a little too oversized, but still. Oh, I was looking up the. Uh, maybe she was talking about uh, the average square footage of houses. I actually looked it up, and it's like 1,500 square feet is the average three to four person house. This whole process has gotten me good experience in, I guess, the, how things actually come together. Up until this point, we've been designing without any of this in mind. Designing without thinking about, oh, how is it going to build? How are we going to build it? How is it going to actually connect? How, is, how are these walls actually going to happen? Is it actually going to stand? So this has actually given me some good knowledge as to where, where I can further my design as to where they actually work in real life instead of a theoretical design. So should we start from this one? Should we start from, from scratch or should we just work out with this one? No, I, I, I think we'll take this one. Because this looks like a linen closet right now. Is that plan? 
No, like, anything. This is the guest room. Yeah, that's the guest, and then behind it, the rental. Yeah, behind it, it's the rental. Now you just walk. Yeah. We have more open space there. Open space there. Yeah. We can make this side. Everything's worked out pretty good. There's some some measurement issues that we ran into. We had to add on some some studs. Um, but it's all about adjusting and, and also adjusting to what happened with any, anything that, any measurement issues, height issues. We had to add, I believe, another top plate, some more studs to our, uh, to our walls. That way we can just uh, um, keep with what we have. Uh, some of the issues have been actually building the uh, the, the, uh, the actual mock-ups. I personally have had construction along with many other of the students, so framing it and um, keeping it square and true, and and having the materials overlap and to make sure the waterproofing is there, and make sure it's nailed in correctly, and while standing up, also that 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 one important issue is keeping it nice and square and true. Long. Also, the way materials go together, the joining, not, caulking is not always the best solution, so you have to overlap materials, just making sure that everything goes on correctly. Uh, some of the challenges have been mainly kind of like what I said, the materials, those, those overlapping joints, making sure they overlap and they stay square certain angles are cut correctly on the rafters, making sure that, that the connections that are there are properly connected and they're nice and, and sturdy. They don't grave a lot. And I guess we had that, it's actually beneficial that we've had a lot of wind lately. So you can text, test out our walls and they seem to be standing up really nicely. We, we have four people in a group. We have two people doing one thing, such as framing, two people measuring out certain cutting rafters, cutting studs, and it's actually going pretty, like, the flow is actually really nice. We're actually doing it at a pretty good pace. So um, my team is we're, we're, all, we're, all doing, we're all working really well together. I'm Edgar Morales. Um, I'm an architecture major and this is my senior year here at UTSA. Basically we took the studio from last year, we took some of their design work. Um, they're trying to do a design build, hopefully build it in the future. And we took their existing floor plans and designs and we were supposed to take a wall from that and create a wall section full scale as you see here and make it out of recycled materials. We're talking about we slope the, wall, the roof to the south rather than to the west and we can pull the, set, the roof material onto the face of the south side. I mean, I was even telling Jeremy, was like, um, but you know, we gotta, yeah, we gotta investigate the materials they're using in the That's really adequate. So we did some alterations to the floor plans, made some changes to the design just to fit the wall that we were doing. The only problem I have with this is that I see us wasting a lot of uh, space just creating that because you have that whole driving up there. Where it's like, you know, if we were to put maybe push this a little bit and put the building right on top of it, you know, they would just drive a small portion where you still have this space for green space. Right now, we would eliminate all that for green space, and then this is the building, so you would just be left with like a little bit. And uh, we, we had some, we're doing our wall made out of uh, recycled aluminum. There are these little prints that they use in print shops to make uh, advertisements and stuff. So we, we lucked out finding that material actually because that was one of the harder parts was looking for the material. What we have is uh, we have our wall that's just going to be basic hardy plank and we're going to have a pop out that's going to be the recycled material. And uh, we had some troubles with the material at first because we, could, we didn't really know how to apply it to the wall. 
uh, without breaking the seal. We wanted to keep it sealed. And so we tried using concrete, uh, rubber concrete, concrete cement. The, but uh, the contact cement, it would hold, but eventually the hold would break. So we ended up having to make some bolts on the back of these panels that we had. And that's the panels are basically gonna be the module that we use to, to be the cladding for that system. And so that was one of the harder things that we had was finding the material, learning how to work with the material, because we, we make all these assumptions like, oh, yeah, we'll use this aluminum cladding, it'll work, it'll look nice. But then when you get to the real world, you find out things don't really work the way you plan. So that was one of the benefits of this that we, that really helped. Because like, as I said, as students, we assume, oh yeah, if I take this material, apply it to this wall, it'll look really nice. No problem, it'll look just the way I expect it to. But then we've already experienced some difficulty with that and we had to make some alterations to how the original idea was. And it still might change because we haven't even applied it to the wall. To the wall yet, we've only made the panels themselves. So we still have to figure out that system. Hopefully everything works with that. This project really helped out with a lot of stuff. I mean, we, we design, we go into the structure, we research the structure, but we never actually build a full-scale wall like this. So this actually helped out a lot. We, we know how much material we're using, how much money we're actually spending. You never realize how much money you spend on nails, especially when you mess something up and you have to redo it. You gotta scrap all that. Hopefully you can reuse that later, but if not, you're kind of stuck with what you have and you just have to spend more money. We went into this class and I think so far we've already spent about 300, I guess, on one of our walls and it, it makes things more realistic. It brings that reality to this project. I feel like it's more beneficial for us since we're the ones actually going through the process of building and we're experiencing, you know, difficulties with construction and money and timing, we, we really had to figure out how to work with our schedule. But for other students, I mean, they've been coming by, they've been seeing these walls and they're like, hey, you guys are doing a good job, that looks cool, what are you doing? So I guess it's helping them spark interest in more of the construction side of it. So hopefully that helps other students and they'll want to jump into these studios and get to do the same thing seeing us out here working. So far it's been pretty good. The design part, when you're taking in everyone's ideas, it's hard to incorporate everyone's idea into the project. But when it comes to building, the teams like four, uh, it's a lot easier. When it was a whole class building, that first wall section, we had some trouble because, you know, we had a, we didn't have enough resources for tools. We didn't have enough tools to go around for everyone. So that was one of the harder things. You would see probably like five people working and everyone else couldn't really do anything. We were just stuck there waiting around for something to be taken care of. So it was harder with the larger groups. I guess we have at least one or two people in each group that have built stuff already. So that helps a lot. They kind of take a leadership role in, all right, this has to go like that. And the rest of us kind of follow along that and hopefully we'll get to that point someday. So. And uh, I benefited from working in a group. This is one of the first projects I've done that's been a group project all the way through. I've done some where it was a group project and then the rest of it you do individually, but it's been fun doing this with a group. And uh, it's also, I mean, I'm learning how not to build certain things. And <laughs> you know, you, you nail something in one way and they're like, hey, try it this way. Oh, thanks. Uh, hi, my name is uh, Jose Velez. I'm an architecture student here at UTSA. I'm a senior, about to graduate this May. Well, this project was uh, has been an ongoing project. Uh, we received some plans and we had to just oversee them, uh, redesign them, and pretty much we had to design a affordable living that was uh, sustainable. 90% of the panels are going horizontal, and we were thinking of possibly creating a component that could be used and minimized in size just to, to give it a nice aesthetic that still fits with the neighborhood. 
using as many reclaimed materials as we could and uh, just trying to provide something simple and efficient, cost-wise uh, low. So, so then, right here we're saying we should uh, consolidate. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I don't like the idea of having them separate either. I'm thinking of introducing uh, this idea of a pallet uh, facade. Mm -hmm. um, Pretty much it gets treated and then it just gets uh, attached uh, vertically, but uh, we would have to figure out how uh, how it works, um, how the connections work, and the, good thing about the standard sizes. The good thing about the pallet is that it can be disassembled to create different, maybe you can use it as a wall texture or just different surfaces. And this is an example of someone using the, the pallet as an exterior material and uh, possibly using a uh, reclaimed or recycled a brick as well, possibly on this wall surface here. One of the biggest challenges was probably uh, learning how everything's actually articulated together. The proper steps or the proper assembly of, of the components of a building or of a corner. Also add the module, structure module for a SIP panels if you do not have SIP panels or yes. framing because having the same module would save you a lot of time mm -hmm. and wouldn't eliminate the waste. Uh, so if you have a corner like this one, doesn't, it doesn't going to be bad actually if you move the hood but if this is like 16 inch so you can have this one at 16 inch as well. Mm -hmm. And do the same. Uh, I see it, it. Aesthetic wise it might actually minimize the quality. But it doesn't matter if you can make the sound by the material that you selected. So uh, this was a really great experience and actually it was hands-on so I think it was the best way to, to learn these, these steps. Some of the issues that we came across uh, have mainly been during the construction phase. Uh, just trying to gather everyone to, to properly and efficiently work on, on the projects. Some people don't, don't have much knowledge of how to use a simple object as a hammer, so uh, it's, it's just been uh, the construction was mainly the issue. The benefits were of course uh, learning how to work in a team, uh, having an assembly line, getting everyone to participate and just learning how to do that effectively and learning how to literally build a, build a corner, uh, build a building. I mean you, you always get an understanding using CAD or doing research but you, you never truly learn it until you do it hands on and it's been a great experience so far. Uh, I'd recommend the, the process uh, to other classes. I, I think students need to learn this and I think it should be established at a, at a lower studio phase other than the last studio because uh, yeah, many, many students go in not knowing any, anything really and especially no construction. If they were to have some possibly some hands-on classes in, in their lower design studios, maybe design three, design four, I think it, it would go a lot more smoother when they get to this stage. But uh, yes, I would definitely recommend this, this again.